Shalom Israel. It's a little little breezy out here. I didn't anticipate that, but that's okay. Cause we're out here. Uh, uh, look, first and foremost, I want to turn to the east. Lift my arms in the in the hair and I want to turn to the east, lift my hands in the air, and give all honors and praises to Yahweh. Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rikakadash. I want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for bringing out the 100% truth and keeping it real, teaching all the brothers around the globe the truth of this book, of the, of the Bible, the gospel of peace. I want to give a shout out to all the Akim out there, the hopeful 144,000 elect, and of course, the one third who follows the land wherever he goes. So look, brothers and sisters, I'm, uh, I think I'm gonna, it's gonna be entitled Life or Death. Uh, one of the elders one time said that, you know, while you're asleep, the Lord does things uh, to, to, to determine your path for that day, what he, what he, what he, what he wants you to do that day. Uh, hopefully everything going to be alright with the lighting here. But, uh, so I had the dream last night, man. And, uh, soon as I woke up from this dream, It's lucky. As soon as I woke up from this dream, I'm just trying to make sure everything, on the lighting and everything, bro, be, be, be okay. As soon as I woke up from this dream, uh, I had this. This was I, I had to write this down immediately. And I've had a brother come to my camp one time before, and I just thought it was strange. I think he might be an angel because, you know, I live on a small island, and he was like, I've never seen you around here before. But I never seen you around here. What are you talking about, right? So we started talking about about the gospel because I was at camp. I was just setting up camp, and uh, he, uh, you know, at first he led on like he didn't know much about what was going on about the Israelites. But then he really got dug deep about it, like he knew everything about it, right? And I started to look at him as as a big brother, as a as a almost like an elder man because of the, what he was talking about, and it was, it was really interesting. And he, he made me feel good. You know, to know that, hey, it's, we're, it's, it's, it's coming to, you know, the prophecies are, are being fulfilled, that the word is spreading. Uh, but before he left, he said that's his job to inspire or something like that or, 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 or to, you know, kind of make sure everything's okay. And uh, he said, I'm on, a, I'm on a good path or something like that. And uh, that when, uh, when you get the inspirations, to write them down because they won't stay in your head you know what I'm saying so that's what I did this morning as soon as I had that dream it was a little disturbing dream um, about the dream about was about me chasing some 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 tail pretty much and uh, you know how back in the world brothers would probably do would you, would you would do things like that take chase some tail around wasting time and stuff like that things that are unprofitable right so uh, so when I woke up uh, in my mind started to click on this. This is profitable. See? And uh, the, the uh, scripture just come, just they started hitting like that. Like living water, just like you say, right? So I started to write them down, man. And here they are, okay? So we're going to bring out, we're going to bring it out. Something wrong. Okay. If y'all don't see me, it's okay because you can, as long as you can hear me, right? And I did, I got this children's location because it's a, it's a nice view. And it's another road that's less, less traveled, okay? So look, we're going to start. This is, this is going to be called Life or Death. We're going to start with the book of uh, Deuteronomy. We're going to go to verse 30, chapter 19. It says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. That I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, chose life, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. That thou may love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayst obey his voice, and that they, thou mayst cleave unto him, for he is thy life. Right? And the length of thy days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and to Jacob, 
to give them. So this is what's set before the children of Israel, life or death, man. And we know what that is. It's choose life, which is a following the word of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai and doing exactly what the Father has told us to do, because He gave us the law, statutes, and commandments that that uh, that what lead to immortality, lead to eternal life, lead to salvation. And then the other path is death. To not do what He told us to do. And that road, uh, what does it say? Uh, sin is a transgression of law of the law. And sin is uh, promotes death, man. Breaking the breaking, the, yeah. Committing sin is is death. I don't like this table here. Something wrong. Okay. I guess that's it. The f okay, so the second scripture we're gonna get to is uh, in the book of Second Ezra. Yeah, I was very excited to get this, man. We're gonna go to Second Ezra chapter seven, verse fifty. Okay. Yeah, right, okay. And that there is promised us an everlasting hope. That's faith. Whereas ourselves being most wicked are made vain. That's a question. Whereas ourselves being most wicked wicked are made vain? And there and that there are laid up for us dwellings of health and safety, whereas we have lived wickedly. So laid up for us is the promise, you know, of everlasting life and, and riches and everything and, and, the, and the fatness of the earth. You know, those are our promises and the rulership of the earth, man. Whereas we have lived wickedly and that the glory of the Most High is kept to defend them that have led a weary life. Whereas we have walked in the most wicked ways of all, right? Because the Lord is a balance still, remember? And that there should be shown a paradise whose fruit endureth forever, wherein is security and medicine, since we shall not enter into it. For we have walked in unpleasant places, and that the faces of them which have used abstinence shall shine above the stars. So that now look, check this out. This is verse 55. So this is Second Ezra chapter 7 verse 55. And that the faces of them which have used abstinence. Abstin abstinence mean that you, uh, you 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 go without. Shall shine above the stars. So that kind of like equals making your body a living sacrifice. So you suffer uh, by not uh, partaking in, in certain pleasures of this world. Something something like that along those lines. Okay. Whereas our faces shall be black. Whereas our faces shall be blacker than darkness. So this is a comparison of someone that's actually doing the right thing and someone who's doing the wrong thing for while we lived and committed iniquity we considered not that we should begin to suffer for it after death no because most of the people when they're out in the world and doing all this stuff they want to do they don't think about the latter end then answered he me and said this is the condition of the battle this is the condition of the battle man which man that is born upon the earth shall fight that if he be overcome he shall suffer as thou hast said but if he get the victory he shall receive the things that I say which is the everlasting life in the paradise for this is the life whereof Moses spake unto the people while he lived saying choose thee life and that's what we just read in Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19 choose thee life that thou may live. Okay? Nevertheless, they believed not they believed not him, nor yet the prophets after him, nor me, no nor me, which have spoken unto them, that there should not be such heaviness in their destruction as shall be joy over them that are persuaded to salvation. So the bottom line is hey. If you're, if you're living uh, unrighteously, you're going to get it, man. So your best bet is to choose life rather than death. Basically, that's pretty much what it's going to boil down to, okay? All right. We're going we're gonna, to uh, segue into the book of Proverbs. And 
And we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 3. We're going to read verse 13. It says, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding man. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and getteth understanding, because those are the things, those are the principal things that's needed to overcome, to endure this wicked world right here, and to get the, and to get the, to actually get the victory, and 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 uh, and those are the things that's going to lead to salvation, wisdom, being afraid, being afraid of the Lord is the fear of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is, that's going to keep you where you should be. And wisdom is also the knowledge of the scriptures. And the understanding is the understanding of the scriptures and to shun evil and turn away from those wicked, those evil things that we know, the iniquities, the sins that we know to not be good. Okay? Uh, while we're in Proverbs, let's stand Proverbs and go to uh, chapter 4, verse 7. It says, Wisdom is the principal thing. See? Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. And now, don't don't get it twisted now. This is something that you just can't stumble upon. The Lord's got to give you these things as well. So you got to be, you know, if you if you earn for these things, you got to pray. And you got to be doing uh doing something good for the Lord for him to give you these things. Or you just be a chosen one, the chosen one. And this is your destiny, okay? But I always say, "Hey man, that's what it says in the scriptures to pray. Pray for wisdom if you feel like you're lacking in wisdom." The Lord say, "Pray, come to him and pray all the time for everything that you need." He wants you to start trusting in Him, man, and leaning on Him. Okay, we're, stay, we're going to stay in Proverbs. We're going to stay in chapter 4, but we're going to jump down to verse 20. It says, we're going to read all the way down to 27. We're going to read the whole, so the rest of this, the rest of chapter 4 from verse 20 all the way down. Okay, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my saying. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them. And health to all their flesh. So what did he say? My son, attend to my words. These words are the scriptures. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Okay? Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. So what's that, what's that equal to? Meditate in the Word day and night. Become a part. Let this Word become a part of you. Because don't forget, the man's all is to serve the Lord. And this is a part of serving the Lord. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all flesh. These words are life to all that finds them. It says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Okay? Put away from thee a forward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. It says, let thine eyes look upright. I'm sorry, let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. So that goes right with the scriptures. Don't, don't turn to the left, don't turn to the right, man. It says, ponder the feet of thy path, ponder the path of thy feet. So think about what you do before you do it, man. Don't don't leap without looking. Don't just jump into things because sometimes you're you're uh, you know you you want to be centered and grounded because sometimes um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. I, let's just use impatient for now or uh, you know or or spontaneous. Sometimes being spontaneous will get you in a in a world of trouble because you're not using wisdom. So always think about what you're going to do before you do it. And that will keep you a lot. That will keep you from uh, going, going, going down the wrong path, man. Or, or, or breaking some laws, statutes, commandments. Or, or making some foolish judgments that will lead to sin, even. It says, Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. So you think about everything you're going to do before you do it. And let your ways be established. That's why it's good to be planning out your day. And don't deviate from that plan, man. It says, turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. There you go right there, see? Remove thy foot from evil. Remove thy foot from evil, okay? Hey, y'all, I can't prepare this time. Excuse me one second. Just got some water mixed with a little uh, little juice. So I want to, nowadays I'm going to uh, water down my juice, man. Like a lot. So mostly drinking water just with a little bit of flavor in it, that's all.
It is a beautiful day. Okay, y'all, we're going to go... Um, Uh, where are we gonna go? Let's let's go to Isaiah. I think it's forty-five, right? No, uh, it's Amos. We're gonna go quickly. We're just gonna qu grab this quickly in Amos, okay, y'all? <laughs> Just give me one second. I just want to make sure I get, I want to get this. Oh shoot, it's 57. What? It's already been 20 minutes. I gotta re, I gotta uh, do the camera anyway. Okay, y'all. We're gonna go to the Book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob. His statutes and his judgment unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So the Lord gave his word unto Jacob, man. His laws and statutes. Hold on. Okay. I had to just had this. Sorry, so like I had to set the timer. So I know when to turn, uh, turn uh, reset the camera. Okay, so the Lord gave his word to Jacob, to man, to the house of Israel. Not to any other. So we got the law, statutes, and commandments, man. So we are the Lord's chosen people. Just, you know. We're going to go back to the book of, uh, to the Apocrypha. And we're going to go to Wisdom of Solomon. And we're going to start at uh, chapter 8. And verse 21, okay. It says, Nevertheless, when I perceived that I could not otherwise obtain her, except Yahweh gave her me, and that was a point of wisdom also to know whose gift she was, I prayed unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, and besought him, and with my whole heart I said, O oh, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, of my fathers, and Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai of mercy. Who has made all things with thy word. And ordained man through thy wisdom. That he should have dominion over the creatures. Which thou hast made. Right? And, and order the world according to, to equity and righteousness. And execute judgment with an upright heart. It says, give me wisdom. That sitteth by the throne, that sitteth by thy throne, and reject me not from among thy children. See, because the, it's the Lord, it's Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai who chooses uh, to give you wisdom or not, man. And that's why you gotta pray to the Lord and ask Him for wisdom. You gotta ask Him for everything. He wants you to rely on Him more, man. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. That's why the Lord calls us worms. I think that's kind of cute, you know. And the uh, brother from uh, Mysteries of the Kingdom, that brother be killing it, man. That's a that man, that brother. But he, uh, yeah, he brings that out a lot. That that we are worms, and worms are like helpless little things, and that's what we are right now. That's what we are. You know what I'm saying? Because the Lord, 
the Lord is our Savior, man. He's 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 all loving and all kind, all merciful. But he also don't take he don't play no crap. So that's why we got to do what the Lord says. Look, there's too much talking now. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter seven, verse eleven. It says, "Wisdom is good with an inheritance, and by it there is profit to them that see the sun." Okay. Sun is the light. They see the light. They have the understanding. For wisdom is a def is a defense, and money is a defense. But the excellence excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. See, because all this other stuff, it comes and goes. But wisdom will give you life, and we're talking about some everlasting life, immortality here. Okay, and we're going to, did I say, oh wait, we're supposed to keep reading down to 18, okay? It says, consider the work of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, for who can make that straight, that straight which he had made crooked? That's right, because he made things to be a certain way. You know, there's an order for, for everything, even though his, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts, and his ways are, are higher than our ways. So, you, that's why you're not supposed to question the Lord, you're just supposed to do what the Father say, okay? I say, uh, this is verse 14. In the day of prosperity, be joyful. But in the day of adversity, consider. Right? Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai also hath set the, one, set the one over against the other. Uh huh. To the end that man should find nothing after him. Because everything is a perfect balance. All things have I seen in the days of my vanity. There is a just man that perishes. In his righteousness, and there is a wicked man that prolongeth his life in his wickedness. But not righteous over much, it says, Be not righteous over much, neither make thyself over wise. Why should thou destroy thyself? And that's what the uh, brother of GMS South Carolina always bring up. Be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why should thou die before thy time? Mm hmm. And that's what he's saying because we know that uh, this salvation is is, is based is uh, is based on faith and and uh, and a serious belief a serious belief of of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai man and the work that you do to show to prove your faith because that's the work that you know so and that's the business that we need to be doing and then ultimately the Lord's gonna choose who who's worthy and who's who you know who who he wants. You see what I'm saying? That's why it says, Be not righteous over much. Neither, neither make thyself over wise. Why should thou destroy thyself? Because you will beat yourself to death uh, trying to uh, do all the laws and everything, which is, is, is good. I mean, that's what the Lord ultimately wants you to be. You, you got to be that perfect person. Okay? You got to always strive for better. That's so there's certain things that you can, you can achieve. So just and don't just lay down and, and commit sin and sin and sin. You understand? Don't rise around thank you somebody just because you think you done doing all the laws and commandments. But just like uh, GMS South Carolina say, hey, are you killing goats? You know, I mean, well, that's 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 fulfilled. The, uh, the Savior died died for that. But you know, we're in our captivity. There's a lot of laws that we that we can't we just can't do, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so. There's, there's limits to this thing, and that's what they're. I, I just, from off the top of my head, I'm, I'm trying to think of one law, but I know a bunch of laws that we can keep. You know what I'm saying? Like some people, they still want to get line edge ups and stuff. They, they don't want to cut. They, they want to cut their beard. Uh, simple things, you know, eating pork. Simple things, even committing down to committing adultery or looking at somebody's wife in a lustful, lustful manner. Things like that, you can just stop, man. Okay. He said, it is good that thou shouldest take hold of this, yea, also from this withdraw not thine hand. For he that feared God shall come forth of them all. So he that feared the Lord will continue in this, in this path of righteousness and, 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 and should be able to achieve, man. If you really, really believe and fear the Lord the way you should be. Because you have actually been calling to fulfill that prophecy. Okay? Let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 21. Is this 
thing still good? Okay. Uh, this is the book of Romans. Oh, sorry. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. It says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? That's funny because we were just talking about that. It says, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, forbid. It says, How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? That's right, because don't forget now, what has happened to us? What has happened? Have we killed that old man? Right? Aren't we a new creature, right? So then what, 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 what sin? What, what, what? Who? You know what I'm saying? It says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai were baptized into his death? Right? So we get into baptism by meditating on the word day, day, meditating on the day, the word day in and day out, right? So we're baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by bat baptism into sin. That that like as Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life, man. Because the old man is dead, remember? Now we are a new creature. And we've raised up. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we should also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is free from sin. Right? So the old man is dead. So we're free because we're free. We're new. We're brand new creatures. We don't know nothing about sin. I mean, well, we we still fighting it, but you know what I mean. We still, we still, but you know, it should be so far away from us that certain things are, and then the rest of them we're working on. You know, certain things are so far away from us. Like I would not take a second thought no more about the pork thing or or, or defiling my temple with cigarettes and stuff. You understand? For he that is dead is free from sin. Now if we be dead with Yahweh Shai, we believe that we shall also live with him, right? Knowing that Yahweh Shai, being raised from the dead, died no more. Death had no more dominion over him, right? Wow, you see that? So now that he done raised from the dead, he's not going to die no more. Because he is, he's, now he's spiritual, man. He's gone, he's got, because he's got it. For in that he died. He died unto sin once. But in that he lived. He liveth unto Yahweh. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. But alive unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. But alive unto Yahweh through Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai our Lord. Right? Now this is, now this is actually talking about immortality. If you, if you, can, if you can hear it. Okay? It says, because don't forget, what's, what's the wage of the sin? It's death, okay? And, and sin leads to, leads to death. But we're speaking about immortality, which sin, if you don't have any sin, then you will become immortal. Okay? It says, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies, that we shall obey it in the lust thereof. That's right, so you just done did away with sin, and don't let it, just don't let it have no dominion over your body. Excuse, excuse me. You know what I'm saying? That's why I do walk around. One of the things that helped me is just, to, you know, when some wicked thought comes into my mind, I'm like, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. And that's that's one way for me to combat it and to alert myself that that's a wicked thought and I shouldn't be thinking like that. You know what I'm saying? You see? It says, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Right? So don't let your body, you can you control this, man. You running this show, man. Don't let your body uh, uh, dictate what's going on, man. It's going to be crying out for things. It's going to be, you tell that body to shut the fuck up. Okay? But yield yourself unto Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members are instruments of righteousness unto Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Right? So, if you do slip up, that's when you immediately um, confess, 
confess that sin, and ask the Lord for forgiveness, and move on, man. And and what? Offend less. It says, "What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace?" Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey? His servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether the sin unto death or the obedience unto righteousness. So which one? Are you are you gonna serve the devil? Are you gonna serve Satan? Or who? Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. That's what it's basically asking you. But Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, be thanked that we were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that, fo that form of doctrine which was delivered you. The form of doctrine right here. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. See, because we're free from the sin. I speak after this manner of man because of the infirmities of your flesh. These chains of darkness. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity. Even so, now yield your member servants to righteousness unto holiness. So when you were going off, when you were in the world, man, you just bam, 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 bam. But now, that's why I say praise the Lord ten times more, right? Huh? Now you're on a winning team. So go bam, 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 bam. I should have did the left hand first and then the right hand with the second bam, bam, bam. Okay? Even so, now yield your member servants to righteousness unto holiness. Okay? Holiness. Pureness. Separation. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. See? So when you were sinning, you didn't think about no damn righteousness. So, but now it's, it's flip-flop because it's the perfect balance, right? It says, What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? Right? You should be ashamed of your sinfulness now. For the end of those things is death. Exactly. But now you should be very happy because you're striving for eternal life. But now being made free from sin and become servants of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Everlasting life. Here we go. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Through Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, our Lord. Okay? And then, right now, I put a little note in here to make sure that we definitely give honors and praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, one more time, for calling us into His marvelous light, man. Okay? Because a lot of people out here have not heard the call. And they probably won't hear the call. They may not even wake up. But for us, for me and my house, we done heard the call. Okay. Look, we're going to run over to Jeremiah real quick. We're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 8. How much time we got? Oh, shoot. What happened? Okay, we got 146. A minute and 47. Jeremiah chapter 8. We're going to try to knock out Jeremiah real quick before I uh, flip the camera, do the camera thing again. I could have used that little smaller camera, but I wanted to use this camera because, um, I don't know. I like to use it when I'm doing the sit downs outside like this for some reason. Okay, Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 1. Uh,. At that time, said the Lord, they shall bring out the bones of the kings of Judah, and the bones of his princes, and the bones of the priests, and the bones of the prophets, and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem out of their graves. Right? And they shall spread them before the sun, and the moon, and all the hosts of heaven, whom they have loved, and whom they have served, and after whom they have walked, and whom they have sought, and whom they have worshipped. They shall not be gathered, nor be buried. They shall be for dung upon the face of the earth. Right? Here, here we go. And death shall be chosen rather than life. And that's what happens at camp when you see a lot of brothers and sisters just walk by the camp. They choose in death rather than life. By all the residue of them that remain of this evil family, which remain in all the places whether I have driven them, said the Lord of hosts. I just wanted to put that out there. 
Because that's why we should be giving honors and praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai and thanking the Lord for waking us up to this truth and letting us see His marvelous light, man, and giving us a chance at everlasting life. You know what I'm saying? It's a precious thing. Now we're going to go to uh, the book of Daniel. I don't think I have enough time. I'm going to go ahead and switch it out real quick, and then we'll... I'm going to switch it out. It's lucky, brothers. I'm not sure, uh, but the battery died on the camera, but luckily I have a backup uh, microphone. So, you know what? In post-production, I'm just going to take a picture of this uh, beautiful view, and when that happens, I'm going to just uh, put that the audio on top of the picture, and then when, when, when I change the battery and come back, we'll come back to the full, to the full view, okay? But, uh, hey, it shouldn't be, I don't know. It's all right, because as long as the word gets out, right? We're going to go to the book of uh, Daniel real quick. Uh, we're going to go to 12, verse 1. Okay, 12, chapter chapter 12, Daniel, the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 1. We're going to read all the way down to 13, okay, real quick. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which, stand, which standeth... For the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since. That was a nation. Okay. I'm, let, let me read that one more time. And at that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince, which, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that time, to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. Okay, so the, your name should be already in the book. Hopefully, please, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, let my name be written in that book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Here we go now, see? He done woke us up. Some to everlasting life. Life, that's what we're speaking about, life or death. And some to shame and everlasting contempt, right? And they that be wise shall shine at the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. So what's been out on the highways and hedges, hopefully we're turning people and and and, uh, and in turn, they're turning people. So you know what I'm saying? It's like a domino effect. But, though, but thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the books, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Then Daniel looked, and behold, there stood two... Other, that stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river, and the other on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in the linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, which he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swore by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time times and a half and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people all these things shall be finished right and I heard but I understood not then said oh I O oh Lord what shall be the end of these things and he said go thy way Daniel for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end many shall be purified and made white and tried but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand but the wise shall understand so the wise are gonna understand and take heed, and they're gonna, we're going to choose life, man. And from that time, that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that make a desolation set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to a thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. But go thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stay, and stand in thy lot at the end of days. Maybe we shouldn't have read that whole thing, but it's always good to read the gospel. It's always good. I like I like reading it, man. Look, let's go to uh, the book of Matthew, chapter seven, because the, what the point I wanted to make was up here anyway. Some shall awake to everlasting life. That's what I really want to forget. Uh, the book of Matthew, chapter I was just, man, I was just so thrilled 
when the Lord woke me up like that, you know, because I like I like it when they do that. Those are the best. Those are the best days, right? It's like you be, you be like getting up, work, get up, get up, get up, go to work. <laughs> this is the book of Matthew, chapter seven, verse thirteen. It says, "Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be." which go in thereat, okay? Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it, right? We all know that scripture, man. But that was Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. Look, now we're going to go to the Apocrypha. We're going to go to the book of Ecclesiastics real quick. I'm going to drink some more of that stuff in a minute, man. I think we're going to go to uh, verse 39, chapter 39. Okay. And we're going to start at 24. As his ways are plain unto the holy, right? So are they stumbling blocks unto the wicked. For the good, for the good are good, good things created from the beginning. So evil things for sinners, right? Let's read that one more time. As his ways are plain unto the holy, so are they stumbling blocks for the wicked. So if you're a wicked person, you're not going to understand this, man. But they're plain to the holy. Okay? For the good are good things created from the beginning. So evil things for sinners, right? Now, that's, see, that's beautiful. So, for the good are good things created. All the way from the beginning, man. So evil things are for the sinners. It says... Um, Yeah, I think we're going to go all the way down. The principal thing for the whole for the whole use of man's life are water, fire, iron, and salt, flour, and wheat, honey, and milk, and the blood of grapes and oil and clothing. All these things are for the good to the god to the godly, right? So to the sinners, they are turned into evil, man, because these people take all these things and they uh, oppress people with them. You know, all kind of stuff. They make turn women into whores with them. You know what I'm saying? And dudes. It made people kill for these things. All these things are, are for the good to the godly. So to the sinners, they are turned into evil. I said, there are spirits that are created for vengeance, which is their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Okay? It says, fire, hell, famine, death. All these were created for vengeance. I wanted look the, the point I wanted to make here was as his ways are plain to the holy, so are they stumbling blocks to the wicked man. So therefore, when I learned I learned a while back that if you want to get this if you want to understand in this book, first you gotta be called, of course. You gotta be chosen, and then you gotta you gotta walk that straight and narrow gate, man, the straight and narrow path. You can't be running around here, uh Breaking all the law, statutes, and commandments, and think you're gonna understand what's going on around here. It's just, uh, it's just not right. And I've experienced that firsthand, man. Okay. And so that's the point I wanted, to, wanted to hit home with y'all. So that's why a lot of brothers uh, up in here lately, they're getting kicked out of camp or they're falling out of the truth because they're, they're, um, was it? What do we say? Uh, with truth and sincerity, they're not sincere, man. And that's the bottom line, because what and, and the brothers been bringing out lately, uh, what y'all doing behind closed doors? What y'all doing behind closed doors? That's that's who you really are, you know. So don't be trying to put on no front, cause it, it's just not right. It's just not no. This not no sporting event. This not no game. This not no. Uh, this is real life, man. And well, hopefully this week the Lord will also let me uh, make that uh, video that's been on my plate for a while. I got uh, some videos on my plate. That the Lord has blessed me with. I just it's just uh, sometimes everything has a has a season. Everything has a time, and it's it's just not that time for it yet. Okay, we're gonna go to Second uh, Ezra. Okay, chapter seven. Seven and one. Okay. 
And when he, when he had made an end of speaking these words, there was sent unto me the angel. Okay. There was sent unto me the angel which had been sent unto me the night before. And he said unto me, Up, Ezra, and, and hear the words that I come to tell thee. And I said, Speak on, my God. Then said he unto me, The sea is set in a wide place, that it might be deep and great, right? But put the case, the entrance were narrow and like a river. It says, Who then could go into the sea to look upon it and to rule it? If he went not through the narrow, how could he come into the broad, right? There is also another thing. A city is built, built it and set upon a broad field. And is full of all good things. The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall. Like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. And one, and one only passed between them both. Even between the fire and the water so small that there could be one man go there at once. Now there's a brother that made an analogy about following the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Uh, because they are leading the way down this path, man. You want to take the same steps that they make to ensure that your footing is going to be secure, you know. And that's a nice analogy. I like that. It says, if this, this is verse 9. If this city now were given until a man from an, for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive his inheritance? Okay? And I said, it is so, Lord. Then he said unto me, even so also is Israel's portion, because for their sakes I made the world, and when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now that now is done. That now is done. Okay, then, this is verse 12, Then were the entrance of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail, that are but few and evils, full of perils and very painful. For the entrance of the elder world were wide and sure, and brought immortal fruit. Wow. If then they that lived labor not to enter these straight and vain things, they could never receive those that are laid up for them. It says, now therefore, why disquietest thou thyself, seeing that thou art but a corruptible man? And why art thy move, whereas thou art but mortal? Why hast thou not considered in thy mind this thing that is to come, rather than that which is present? That's right. That's why we're looking for new heavens and new earth, man. That's why we're striving for this, for this uh, incorruptible, incorruptible uh, place. You know, this incorruptible new bodies and things then answered I and said O Lord that bearest rule thou hast or ordained in thy law that the righteous should inherit these things but that the ungodly shall perish nevertheless the righteous shall suffer straight things and hope for wide for they that have done wickedly have suffered the straight things and yet shall not see the wide that's right because we are in this mindset of faith and belief man and we're, we're working toward that straight path man and righteousness and he said unto me there is no judge above God and none that have understanding above the highest for there be many that perish in this life because they despise the law of Yahweh Hashem and Yahweh Shai that is set before them but we don't despise it right brothers and sisters for Yahweh for Hashem and Yahweh Shai has, set, has given straight commandments to such as came that they should do to live even as they came and what they should observe to avoid punishment. So he done let people know these are the laws, statutes, and commandments. Now if y'all, you know, even, and we coming out again to reiterate that, that hey y'all, y'all been deceived, the laws are not done away with, you know, we're supposed to be doing it this way. And what do these people do? They say, oh no, 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 we're going we're gonna to keep going this way, man, because it's comfortable. And that's why the Lord said right here. Nevertheless, they were not obedient unto him, but spoke against him and imagined vain things. Right? 
and deceived themselves by their wicked deeds and said of the Most High that he is not and knew not his ways. Right? Because they'd rather worship Caesar Borgia or some money or something like that. Even though we're telling them, hey man, this is it. This is where you choose life or death, man. This is where your real faith should kick in at. This is what faith is all about. Because we were raised with this so-called Jesus Christ and this false god and false idol. But this is something we never heard of. But it's straight out the Bible. So that's where your faith should lie. Right? But his laws have they despised and denied his covenants. In his statutes have they not been faithful and have not performed his works. And therefore, Ezra, for the empty are empty things and for the full are full things. Behold, the time shall come that these tokens which I have told thee shall come to pass, and the bride shall appear. Woo! And she cometh forth shall be seen that now is withdrawn from the earth, and whosoever is delivered from the foresaid evils shall see my wonders. And that's what we're working for, right, right brothers and sisters? So that was a that was a nice read right there. I like that one. Okay, look, y'all. We're gonna go. Back to Ecclesiastics in the Bible. Okay. Hey, 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 don't you do that. I gotta drink some of that water. What time is it? How long we got? We got two minutes but before I have to switch the switch that thing over. Uh Okay, so this is the book of Ecclesiastes. We're going to go to chapter 3, verse 1. It says, To everything there is a season, a time to every purpose under the, under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time to war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherewith he laboreth? I have seen the travail which Yahweh Hashem and Yahweh Shai hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. So this is the time of repentance, man. This is the time to be getting ready for your how about Shemini how to shine to return, okay? We done had the time of running around being wicked and being uh, harlots and everything. But this is the time of repentance, okay? And get ready because the time is at hand, y'all, right? Now, look, I'm going to change the camera around one more time, okay? Uh, this should be the last time because I think we can, we can finish everything in the last one. Okay. Okay, y'all, we're going to go to the book of uh, Colossians. We're going to go to chapter 3, okay? It says, If ye then be risen with Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, seek those things which are above, where Yahweh Shai sitteth on the right hand of Yahweh. Okay? Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Okay? So, that's why we... Uh, that's why we don't care about, we, we're not a part of this world, but we, we're in it, okay? For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. That's what I'm talking about, I like it. So, yeah, because our spirit is, you know, should be right here. You know what I'm saying? Not all over here, not over there. Okay? When Yahweh Shai, who is our life, shall appear... Then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Oh. It says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Now I uh, looked that word up. Mortify means kill. <laughs> it says, Kill therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, in, in, inordinate, inordinate affections, evil con, 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 con Compensance and covetousness, which is idolatry. Okay, for which things sake the wrath, sake the wrath of God cometh unto the children of disobedience. I'm gonna look up those words right there. I, I, I have looking them up, but I'm gonna make sure that you understand what these words mean. Okay.
Okay, Akim, I got these uh, two definitions for you. Inordinate, inordinate, irregular, disorderly, excessive, immoderate, not limited to rules prescribed or to usual bounds as in ordinate love of the world, inordinate, inordinate desires of fame. Okay, the second definition is concupiscence. To, com to covet or lust after the desire or covet, lust unlawful or irregular desire of sexual pleasures, in a more general sense, the com coveting of carnal things or an irregular appetite for wor worldly good inclinations for unlawful enjoyments. We know even secret concupiscence to be sin sin talking occasion taken occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of concupiscence for which things sake the wrath of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai cometh on the children of, of disobedience right in the which ye also walk sometime when ye lived in them Right, because we did it just like we just we just read before. We we did all that stuff, but this now there's, there's not the time for that no more. Okay, but now ye also put off these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communications out of thy mouth. It says, lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after ye, after the image of him that created him. Wow, you, just, you read that now. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge. Right? With, which is renewed in the word, right? After the image, which is Yahweh Shai, of, of him that created him. So he's talking about the, after the image of Yahweh, ultimately, because he created Yahweh Shai. Because it's the knowledge of that. And that's what the mystery of the kingdom was talking about. Thank you, mystery of the kingdom, for giving us the understanding of that man. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circum circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Yahweh Shai is all and in all. It says, put on therefore as the elect of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against thy, against any, even as Yahweh Shai forgave you, so also do ye. Okay. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfection. And we all know that charity is coming out on the highways and byways and uh, and, and, and 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 throwing out the nets, throwing out their fishing line, I'm trying to catch them fish, the 144,000 and the one third out there, man. To open them up, to open up their eyes to tell the truth, gospel of peace, man. That's charity. Okay? Look, we're going to go to uh, Isaiah. Isaiah 52, verse 11. It says, Depart ye, depart ye. Go ye out from thence. Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out from the midst of her. Be ye clean. That bear the vessels of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Now look. It says, depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence. Now that goes back from not being in the world, right? What we just read as well. Okay? See, man? Told you. Living water is right here, man. Okay? I'm telling you, man, I just woke up and uh, I just started writing. I just started writing. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, look. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon. We're going to go to uh, chapter 7, verse 24. Okay, it says. Okay, we're going to go. We're going to read from 24 to, to 30, okay? It says, For wisdom is more moving than any motion, right? She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. For she is the breath 
of the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Okay? Therefore can no defiled thing fall into her. Now that's some serious business right there, and that's what we were talking about before. Okay, you got you can't you, you won't be able to because it said the wicked will not understand this thing, and that's why, because they're they're defiled. For she is the brightness of the everlasting light, the unspotted mirror of the power of God and the image of his goodness. Okay? And being but out and being but one, she can do all things. And remaining in it, in herself, she makes all things new. See? Cause that's because it's like being born again, a new creature, right? And in all ages, entering into her holy souls, she maketh them friends of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, and prophets. Woo! For Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai loveth none but him that dwelleth with wisdom. Yahweh loveth none but him that dwelleth with wisdom, right? You don't like no stupid ass fool, man. The probably that don't want to act right and get right and can't understand and don't want to understand. For she is more beautiful than the sun. And above all the or the order of stars being compared with the light she is found before. And after this and after this cometh night, but vice shall not prevail against wisdom. Right? Because wisdom is gonna always prevail, man. Because wisdom leads to what? Everlasting life, eternal life. Okay, look, we're gonna go to Wisdom of Solomon. Uh, we're gonna we can stay in the wisdom of Solomon, we're gonna move over to chapter 15 right it says here we go but though but but though oh yeah how about shimmy how shy arch gracious and true long-suffering and in mercy ordering all things for if we sin, we are thine. But for if we sin, we are thine, knowing thy power. But we will not sin, knowing that we are counted thine. Right? So we don't want to. Uh, we don't want to do anything to displease the Father right now in this perfect gift that He's given us, man. For to know thee is perfect righteousness. Yea, to know thy power is the root of immortality. See. For neither did the mischievous in, in, inventions of men deceive us, nor an image spotted with device, device colors, the painter's fruitless labor. So they, they tried to do it, but they ultimately, when the, when the Spirit of the Lord came upon us, we just saw right straight through all that stuff. The sight whereof enticed fools to lust after it, and so they desired the form of the dead image that have no breath and that's what the Lord always talking about these false gods and false idols it says both they that make them they that desire them and they that worship them are lovers of evil things and are worthy to have such things to trust upon wow and that's why the Lord say I'm gonna leave you up to your own devices man that's what you want call upon them in your day of trouble for the potter tempted soft tempering soft earth fashioned every vessel with much labor for our service yea of the same clay he maketh both the vessels that serve for clean uses and likewise also as such as serve to the contrary but what is the use of either sort the potter himself is the judge right and employing his labors lead leadly he maketh a vain god of the same clay even he which a little before was made of earth himself and within a little while after returning to the same out of which he was taken when his life which was lent him shall be demanded notwithstanding his care is not that he shall have much labor nor that his life is short but striveth to excel goldsmiths and silversmiths and endeavoreth to do like the workers in the brass and count it, it his glory to make counterfeit things his heart is ashes his hope is more vile than earth and his life is less value than clay 
So the Lord talking about the wicked that, that he made to make these things. For so much as he knew not his maker and him that inspired him to have an active soul and breathe in the living spirit. But they counted our life as past a pastime. And our time here a market for gain. Because they make these things to sell and they don't believe they don't believe in that shit. Really. But it's all just for money. For saying they we must get we must be getting every way, though it be by evil means. They don't care how they get it. That's why people ch traffic children and, and, and child pornography kids, man. They're gone, man. They don't think about the latter end. They just think everything going to be like this, man. Mm -hmm. Though it be, uh, uh, we must be getting every way. They must get it any way they can. Though it be by evil means. For this man that is of earthly matter maketh brit brittle vessels and grave graven images. What's that? Um... Commandment number four. Now knoweth himself to, to offend above all others and all the enemies of thy people that hold them in subjection are most foolish and are more miserable than very babes. For they counted all the idols of the heaven of the heathen to be gods. Now they're talking about these Israelites, man. They're, even when we tell them, hey, y'all worshiping a false god and false idol, they still keep going, man. Which neither have the eyes, use of eyes to see, nor noses to draw breath, nor ears to hear, nor fingers or hands to handle. And as for their feet, they are slow to go. For man made them, and he, he that borrowed his own spirit fashioned them. <laughs> he say, him that borrowed his own spirit fashioned them. Because he didn't make himself, but he's making some uh, a god an idol, like he's supposed to be somebody. But no man can make a god like unto himself. For being mortal, he worketh a dead thing that with wicked hands. For he himself is better than the things which he worships. Wow. That, that That's the Lord showing them how foolish they are to be, even be considering these things. Whereas he lived once, but, ne but they never. Yea, they worship those beasts also that are most hateful. For being compared together, some are worse than others. Neither are they beautiful. So much as to be desired in respect of beasts, but they went without the praise of Yahweh Shem and Yahweh Shai and his blessings. Okay. Ooh, okay, we're gonna go we're gonna stay in the book of wisdom of Solomon and we're gonna go to chapter one, okay y'all? We're almost finished, y'all. We got like about four, four more verses to go. This is wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 1. It says, Love righteousness, yea, that be judges of the earth. <laughs> it says, Think of the Lord with a good heart, and in simplicity of heart seek Him. Right? And that's what we're doing. That's what we tell people to do. Okay, here we go. So we seek the Lord. For He will be found of them that tempt Him not, and showeth Himself unto such as do not distrust Him. Because we trust and we put our trust in the Lord now. Because the Lord know what's going on. He know who's, who's for him and who's not. For forward thoughts separate from God. See? And his power when it is tried. Reprove the, the unwise. For into a malicious soul wisdom shall not enter. Nor dwell in the body that is subject to sin. Hey, brother. Let's, we're going to read that one more time. This is verse 4. So the wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 4. For into a malicious soul wisdom shall not enter. Okay? Nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. And that goes right back to the wicked. The wicked won't understand but the wise shall understand. Because the wicked going to do wickedly. The wicked. The, 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 because they, they, they're, they're, they're sinful. They're sinful. And we just read what? For into a malicious soul wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject to sin. Okay? For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding, and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. Now that's some serious business right there. So that's telling y'all brothers, stay holy man. You gotta stay on the path. You can't turn to the right and you can't turn to the left. You can't go out and dabble a little bit, man. Because you're, you're risking your life. You're risking things, man. You can't sin willfully. Definitely not that. 
You can't just say and be like, oh yeah, well, I know we're on the grace. And that's what uh, Romans was talking about, right? You can't. You just can't do these things, okay? We got a minute and 59 seconds, so we are going to have to start it over one more time. So look, I'm going to go to the book of John real quick. I might be able to knock out. John, chapter 7. I think it's 38. Yeah. And we all know this one. John 7, 38. He that believed on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said. Who He that believeth on the word, as the scripture has said. Okay? We're talking about the whole nine yards here. Now we're going to go to the book of Psalms. Okay, 40. I think it's time. We, we, got, we, got, we should have time to, to do this last one. 40 verse 7. It says, Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. So this book is Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. That is the word. And that's how we understand and get closer to the Lord and get to know Him through this book. Okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start the camera over one more time, y'all. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna um sorry, Salaki Bros, I have to get, keep getting up to do the camera, but hey, that's a light thing. Thank thank the Lord that we're able to do this, man. You know what I'm saying? And put and put and put uh, record these things. Thank you, thank thank you, how about show me how shy that we have cameras and we're able to put these things on on the unicorn so everybody can watch them, man. This 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 is a good piece of work. It's a marvelous piece of work. So this is a. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7 it says then said I lo I come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will O God so that's Yahweh saying he's he's written in the he's the volume of the book to do Yahweh's will okay um okay now we're gonna skip over to the book of James real fast and we're gonna read chapter 1 verse 22 it says, but be ye doers of the word, okay, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. And that goes all the way, that goes, to, that goes to everything we had just read. Choose life rather than death. How do you do that? By following the law, statutes, and commandments. Well, how? By understanding the word, by fearing the Lord, and doing what he say, right? By staying righteous, because to, to be righteous goes hand in hand with with uh, getting wisdom and keeping it and keeping the understanding of the word so it's like a catch-22 right you gotta you gotta repent and become clean first to even start receiving this knowledge all right first you gotta be called and then you just gotta stay on the path man you gotta stay on the path okay Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon in the Apocrypha. Is this this is in the Apocrypha, right? I hope so. Yeah, I think so. I think it is. I don't know why. I normally write it down. App. See, I told you. So it is something to do with the bright lights that uh, must open up my my iris a little bit more. This is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6. It says, Hear therefore, O ye kings, and understand, learn, ye that be judges of the earth, ends of the earth, man. And that's what we're hoping for. That's why we call us, that's why we're calling ourselves the hopeful 144 elect, man. It says, Give ear, ye that rule the people, and glory in the multitudes of nations. For power is given you of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai and sovereignty from the highest. Who shall try your works and search out your counsel? Because being ministers of his kingdom, ye have not judged aright, nor kept the law, 
nor walked after the counsel of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Horribly and speedily shall he come upon you, for a sharp judgment shall be to them that be in high places. Whoops, wait a minute. For mercy will soon pardon the, the meanest, but mighty men shall be mighty, mightily tormented. For he which is Lord over all shall fear no man's persons, neither shall he stand in awe of any man's greatness. For he that made the small and great and, ca and careth for all alike, but a sore trail shall come unto the, upon the mighty. Unto you, therefore, O kings, do I speak that ye may learn wisdom and not fall away? For they, for they that keep holiness, holiness shall be judged holy. Okay? And they that have learned such things shall find what to answer. Okay? Wherefore, set your affections upon my words, desire them, and ye shall be instructed. Right, so set your set your affections upon the words, man. Desire them, and ye shall be instructed. See, it's like a fail fail proof thing. Wisdom is glorious, and never fadeth away. Yea, she is easy. She is easily seen of them that love her, and found of such as seek her. She pre she prevented them that desire her, in making herself first known unto them. Right. Whoso seeketh her daily shall have no great travail, for she, for he shall find her sitting at his doors, man. To think, therefore, upon her is perfect perfection of wisdom. And whoso waiteth for her shall quickly be without care. Uh-huh. See? For she goeth about seeking such as she are worthy of her, showing herself favorably unto them in the ways. And meeteth them in every thought. For the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline. Okay? And the care of discipline is love, man. What and what is love? Keeping the commandment. And love is the keeping of her laws. And the and the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. See? And incorruption make us near unto Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Therefore, the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. That's why it starts off by saying, Oh, ye kings. And it's talking about all the bad kings that came before. But now it's our time uh, to stand up rightly, man. If we want to be this 144,000 elect, we want to be the kings and judges, it's time for us to start and stand up rightly. It says, this is verse 21. If you delight in then, if, if you delight be then, if your delight be then in thrones and scepters. <laughs> oh man. Talking about a new song here? Talking about some rash of riches here? Talking about some Cinderella story here? It says, O ye kings of the people, honor wisdom that ye may reign forevermore, man. It says, as for wisdom, what she said, it said, what, sh what she is and how she came up, I will tell you, and will not hide mysteries from you, but will seek her out from the beginning of her na nativity, and bring the knowledge of her into light, and will not pass over the truth. Neither will I go with co consuming envy, for such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom. Okay, but the multitude of the wise is the welfare of the world, and the wise king is upholding of the people. Receive therefore instruction through my words, and it shall be, and it shall do you good. Okay? Hey y'all, we've come to the end. We just got one more scripture, okay? We just got one more scripture, and then we're going to close it out. And I hope hope this was edifying, man. I hope y'all enjoyed the view, and I hope you enjoyed the words of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. I hope you were edified. Uh, I I I I delighted in bringing the word out today, and I, I delighted delighted in waking up to the to them this morning, and I delight in going home and, and putting them on wax, man, for y'all, and I delight in 
understanding just a little bit more today. And I delight in, in the Lord uh, opening up our eyes to see and bring us to the truth, man. So it's, it's really special, it's really beautiful. Uh, so we're going to go to the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 13. Okay? This is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 13. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Okay? And it says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Okay? So all we have to do, brothers and sisters, is stay on this path of righteousness and endure until the end. Okay? Okay, with all that, we're going to raise our hands, turn to the east, and give all honors and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem. Yahweh Shai, Mahashem Rekakadash. We're going to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for shedding light, you know, through the, through the Holy Spirit, through the power of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, bringing, bringing forth the truth, man. Hmm? Being that beacon. And of course, salutations to the 144,000 and hopefully elect who pushes this word in all truth and sincerity. Okay? And, and the one third, the true believers in Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, the ones that, the helpers, uh, the ones that do everything they can and to uh, fulfill prophecy and understand, you know, that do, that, you know, do, that do them things. And I want to make a video for y'all too, man. It's on, it's on, it's on, it's on, it's on the stove. It's on the stove. Okay? So, listen. That's it, man. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Shalom. Let me take a good look at this view and drink a little bit of water. Mm, it is a nice day. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so y'all can get, get a nice little... Check it out real quick.